Clippers got better this offseason. Is it enough to win a title? In my opinion, no. But I'm going to expand on that. First, let's go over their additions and how it will help them this year. Serge Ibaka in free agency. And he's going to be their most impactful acquisition this offseason. Because he's going to be able to guard elite all-NBA big men somewhat well. Obviously, he's not going to be able to stop them completely. But he's going to be able to contain them. And that was their biggest weakness. And getting a, a player like Serge Ibaka who can defend well um, and who is versatile is pretty good. Now, the idea that um, defending big men is their biggest problem uh, can be shown um, during this year's playoffs when, I mean, they got destroyed by Porzingis when he was healthy during uh, the four games he played, something like that. Um, and they got destroyed by Jokic as well. So they got destroyed by all NBA um, big men. And having Serge Ibaka on this team will help with that problem. The other major change for this Clippers team was they traded Rudy McGruder, um, hopefully that's a nice pronunciation of his name, and Landry Shamit to the Pistons for Luke Kennard. Now, I feel like the analysis of this trade kind of comes down whether you think that Landry Shamit or Luke Kennard is the better player. Which of them do you think is the better player? Rudy didn't really play that much for the Clippers this year. Uh... And Landry Shamit, he was a very key part of their rotation. And Luke Kennards is going to be a very key part of their rotation. So that's where I feel like this analysis comes down to. So the first thing you have to take into account is that Luke Kennard has an injury history. He has left knee tendinitis um, or something like that. And there's been concerns about his left knee going forward. That is why, according to Zach Lowe of ESPN, that they got four that the Clippers got four additional four four additional second round picks as part of this deal. Now, injury history aside and injury concern aside, I do think when it comes to creating, Kennard is the better player. When it comes to shooting, I think Shaman is the better player. Although Shaman did have, by his standards, a down year in shooting, he shot around thirty five percent from three, and Kennard actually shot better than. Him from three last year, um, where he shot around 39% from three. Um, but Shamit is a 40% three-point three, uh, 40% uh, three point shooter, while Kennard is 9% shooter from three. What's the verdict? Well, I do think Shamit is more key to a team success. I do think this was a necessary move for the Clippers, as they do need more playmaking. And Kennard definitely fits that build. Last year, he had around four assists per game, which is pretty good. And they're definitely going to need that going forward. Also, last year showed us that Kennard can score a lot of points in bunches. He had around 15 uh, points per game on 12 shots uh, per game as well. Now, he's obviously not going to get 12 shots on this Clippers team. More like he's going to get around 8 shots per game. And so his scoring titles, his scoring might go down a little bit. But I do think making this Kennard trade was good for the Clippers and was the right move for them. Now, there are some Lou Williams trade rumors. He's in the last year of his deal, and you do need to find another playmaker on this team, and I don't know where in the league you're going to find that. Um, maybe Terry Rozier is available, but I don't know how you... You would have to find another salary to match that with the $8 million you have already. And, yeah, I don't know where you're going to find um, a team that wants to give up a playmaker. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys say in the comments. Leave your thoughts of that below. And also just leave any uh, any other basketball opinions you got in there in the comments below. Always love when you do, always love that when you do that. Um, but, yeah, Lou Williams, I don't fully, I wouldn't be surprised if Lou Williams isn't on this roster when it's playoff time. Um, especially because of these trade rumors. Now that I've talked about all the major moves they made this offseason, let's talk about whether I think this is a championship contending roster. Now, the short answer is yes. Are they the favorites? No. The favorites are the Lakers. I made a video on that. Check it out. Link in the description. Now, why do I not think they're the favorites? Because I'm, I don't really trust... 
Patrick Beverly when it comes to ball handling the ball. I think he's a great defender. I think he needs to work on his ball handling. Additionally, I think they need some more rim protection. Now, they do have Serge Ibaka, but they lost to Michael Green in free agency. And I do think they need more rim protecting or more good rim protecting players. Now, finally, this is kind of the last year of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. At least, unless they don't sign an extension or they don't re-sign them in free agency. They do have a player option this summer. And you gave up all those picks for Paul George. You don't win a title this summer and you don't re-sign them both in free agency. That trade they made for Paul George is going to set them back hugely. Uh... And yeah, that's really all I got in this video. So to conclude, I think this team is going to make the Western Conference Finals is going to lose to the Lakers. I don't think that they are a lock for the Western Conference Finals. Also, I could definitely see them winning against the Lakers in a Western Conference Finals series. But um, I do have the Lakers favored in a potential Western Conference Finals matchup. But... um. I do think that this team is a title contending team, but they're not the favorites. So that's really all I got in this video. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe.